there's nothing worse than turning up to a training session realizing you've forgotten an essential piece of kit. Now, admittedly for swimming you don't need quite as much paraphernalia as you do for say something like cycling but still to make sure you've got all of the essential equipment required it's a pretty comprehensive list that you need in that kit bag. Yeah and maybe you've wondered why swimmers always seem to have such a large rucksack and maybe even an extra kick bag as well. Well today we're going to talk through all the things that we've got in our swimming bags and let you know what you might need for your next swim. Okay, now let's start with the most obvious, which is our swim bag. You need something that's big enough to take all of the things that we're talking about that we need for swimming, but you also don't mind it to be getting wet because, well, let's face it, swimming pool is a wet environment. Quick tip would be to take another separate bag that you can use to keep all your wet gear separate from the dry stuff in your bag. And a further hack might be, once you've wrung out your tri suit or your swim kit, stick that inside your cap to avoid everything else getting wet. Right, you're not going to get very far without the essentials. A swimsuit, a pair of goggles, and a cap. Oh, a spare cap as well, we'll come on to that in a moment. Now, I personally actually wear a swimsuit to the pool quite often, then I make sure I've definitely got it. Although do remember to pack your underwear if you opt for that one. But you don't want to be forgetting a swimsuit and having to borrow one from lost property. There's nothing worse than that. And the same goes with goggles. I'd say they're pretty personal. Once you've found a pair that you like, you want to stick with them. And it's so annoying if you're about to start a swim session and you get a strap that pings open. So it's always worth just keeping a spare pair in your bag, even if it's just for a friend. And then when it comes to cap, the same goes there. Caps do sometimes split just as you're putting it on or you're stretching it in a session. So there's no harm in just keeping a spare one. And they also come in handy when it comes to storing your wet swimsuit at the end of a session. You can just pop your swimsuit inside your cap and it works like a waterproof bag. Now, there's a few items that we cannot do without and one of those is definitely our towel. There is nothing worse than putting on a wet t-shirt because we haven't been able to dry ourselves properly. So if you're a bit tight on space maybe, then just pack a travel towel. But don't forget to take it out at the end of the day because they can get a bit smelly and mouldy if left alone. Just because you're surrounded by water doesn't mean you're getting hydrated and it can quite often mask the thirst. Swimming pools are normally hot and humid as well, so always have a water bottle with you and try and get in the habit of taking sips throughout your training session. Now, I also normally keep an emergency gel or some fuel mix and sometimes even some recovery food for afterwards because if you're doing a long session, you will need some energy throughout and quite possibly recovery as soon as you get out of the pool. Now, onto the swim toys, which admittedly can be a little bit bulky, but one of them that I definitely think is worth taking is the pool boy. I can't go anywhere without a pool boy for a swim session, but if you're not too fussed about having to take it along in your bag, then most swimming pools do have them spare and there to borrow. Now, onto the second one, which is perhaps one that I would leave at home, is the kickboard. These are not necessarily things that we use that often in a triathlon swimming session, certainly not like swimmers who do much more kick-dependent swim sets. However, they are really good tools for recovery, warm-up, and if you do want to replace your pool boy, the kickboard is a good option. Right, something you're not likely to find in your local pool lost property are fins and paddles. And most importantly, paddles actually need to be the right sort for you that will help you with your stroke. So make sure you've always got some of those in your kit bag. And the same goes with fins, especially if you do want to swim with a squad that are maybe a little bit stronger than you, you can pop your fins on and still keep up. And they're also great for doing drills. Now we've covered the more essential of items, but one that you might not have perhaps thought about is the ankle band, which I use to keep my paddles together in my bag. Now it does what it says on the tin, we put it around our ankles, we use it when we're swimming pool to completely isolate our legs and stop us doing any sneaky kicks when we're swimming pool. Now I would definitely recommend keeping that pool boy that I just talked about in there when we are swimming with the band because otherwise you're more than likely going to see your legs sweeping the pool floor underneath you. We're getting a little more specific now with this piece of kit. It's known as a physio band, theraband, just elastics, basically a big piece of stretchy elastic like this, which comes in handy for various things. If you do want to do some stability work with your shoulder, getting them activating, you see swimmers using these often on poolside before their training session. If you don't have a very long window in the water, another way to use it would be as a warm up, to really get your swimming muscles engaged so that you can get in and get onto the main set pretty quickly. Most pools don't allow outdoor footwear, understandably so. so 
Packing a pair of flip-flops, leaving them in the bottom of your bag is useful. Also, if maybe you're training outdoors or the pool surface is really a little bit dirty, just protect your feet and some pools insist on them. Now, I did say this list was going to be pretty comprehensive. So if you are someone who hates the water going up your nose or in your ears, then a pair of earplugs and nose clip are handy to keep in there. Also, essentials that I always have in my bag, hairbrush after swimming, it gets a little bit tangly. Um, also, moisturizer and shower gel, because no one really wants to carry that scent of eau de chlorine around with them all day, and dry skin is always a problem, I find, for swimmers. Following on from Heather's extras, there's a couple things I kept buried in the bottom of my swim bag too. Firstly being a little tub of Vaseline or petroleum jelly. Now this was just in case I was swimming in my wetsuit prior to race season, which I did often used to do. But I would always get a rub on my neck, so I would put that there just to stop that happening when I was breathing. Second was some anti-fog solution. Now, it's up for debate how you really can stop your goggles from fogging up. It's an age-old problem. But I did find this stuff, if I just put a little bit applied onto each goggle lens, would do the trick. Well, I did warn you it was going to be a comprehensive list, but don't worry, you haven't got to go out and buy every single piece of kit we've talked about. Just make sure you've got the essentials. No, but you definitely don't want to forget a swim cap. And in fact, why don't you watch our latest show for your chance to try and win one, or alternatively, just click on the link to the shop. Hopefully you've enjoyed our video, so hit that thumb up like button. Don't forget, click on the globe and subscribe for all our other videos on the channel. And if you want to see a video about foggy goggles, you can get that here. And if you want some tips from the physio or how to use a TheraBand, we've got a video on that one here. Fraser, I think we should probably go and use some of this kit. Must swim. swim. Come on. Okay, hop.